This is going to be a great sister to sister show. Here's a question we have. Does it matter what kind of friends you have? What about this friend? How do we listen to God? Oh, he's my friend. You're my friend. Oh, you're my friend. And you too. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to Sister to Sister. I am so glad you're with us today. We are five opinionated women of God and we bring it. You're gonna hear it in one second. But first, I want to welcome Angela Madden today. Angela is a host on CTV's Hope Today and you're in Flo's seat. Yes, it's a hot, hot seat. Hot seat. <laughs> That's so right here. Just right. so you know. Well, I'm gonna start right out with these questions that you send us and we try with everything we have to answer you. You wrote, why does it matter if Christians go to church? Can't you just watch at home, be at home? Corey. Well, first of all, you can be a Christian anywhere, okay? Yes, yes. I can be a Christian in a box. I can be a Christian with a fox. I can be a Christian here or there. I can yes. be a Christian anywhere. That's good. That's okay, good. so all right, let's get to the meat of the, the question, which is really, yeah. Uh, you know, do I need to go to church? Why does it matter? And, and it does matter. It matters to the heart of God. I mean, God really commands us to, you know, go to church, to be part of a local body, to, you know, to, to be part of that fellowship. And really, it, you know, what it comes down to is you're missing out. When you're not part of a local church, you're missing out on, you know, the blessing of the fellowship with other people, of the, you know, the ministry of serving. There's a blessing in that and you miss out on that. And I think a lot of people, you know, they put too much on themselves. They put this list of, you know, demands on themselves. And I, and I get it, you know, Sunday mornings are hard, especially when you have little ones and, you know, you, you, you put this list on yourself that there's a lot of like fighting and arguing that happens on Sundays, but you, you feel like, oh, I have to dress up. I have to, you know, get my life together. I have to like do this, that, and the other thing. And it's like, just, just get, just get rid of that list. Just, mm -hmm. just come to church. Like the, like hospitals are for the sick. You right. don't have to clean up your mess. You don't have to clean That's up your right. life. Just come. Come as yes. you are. As you well, are. now both of you are pastors. So what do you say to the people? Yeah, I mean, I think that, like scripture says, it's for the edifying, the building up of the bride, of the body, you know. So when you come, you bring your gift and it builds me up. I come and I bring my gift and it builds you up. I think we've gotten into this mindset here, especially within the American culture, that I go and I hear from a pastor and that's all I'm going to church for. But that's not it. That's part of it that I may grow and be challenged in my faith. But the larger piece of it is that I'm going and Holy Spirit in you is conveying truths that you've walked in and that you've, he's revealed to you that are now coming into me and building me up and vice versa. Edifying each other. Yes. Amy. Well, I think this is a really important question, especially after COVID, after yes. shutdowns, after stay at home, all of a sudden it's super comfortable. And statistics show that online school does not work, that kids are failing. And so why do we think being just an online Christian is going to win? And there, I'm not talking about, you know, unusual circumstances yes. and nursing homes and, you know, physical issues, but I'm talking just a casual attitude to showing up to be a part of the body. A, a body is, a, I mean, we're, we're a body. Things are functioning. I can't have a disconnected arm that's in another room and show up here. It, you're part of a body, there's a connection there. So we were just in Israel and we were in the city of Capernaum, which would have been Jesus's home base for his ministry. Can you imagine? We're looking at the Sea of Galilee and we're in Peter's house. And it's so cool where Jesus healed Peter's mother-in-law, which isn't that a miracle? Yes. Like have their mother-in-law, yes. the only recorded time Jesus heals a mother-in-law. Um, but you just walk right around the corner to the synagogue. So like if we don't need to be at a church, if we don't need to be in an extra building, if we don't need to be in a synagogue, why did Jesus go? Why did Jesus do it? Why did our 
apostles and the right. founders of the of the Acts Church, why did they have to leave home and go to that location where they could be the ecclesia, the, the called out governing body of Christ? That's good. So I think about Acts, you know, accountability, care, teaching, and service. You don't get that on your own by yourself. Amen. You've got to be a part come of a body. On, come good. On. What, do Hallelujah. you have a scripture for me? Wow, they are good. And I was looking for the chapter and verse because you <laughs> might ask me. You know, David was all screwed up about something. Whoever wrote this psalm, and go look it up. He David. said, why, why are the heathen being blessed? Why are evil men, why are evil men prospering? And then the scripture says, but then I entered your sanctuary. Wow. God transforms your mind when he is present. And what does it say? He inhabits the praises of his people. people. Now God is omnipresent. He is everywhere. He is when you're in your prayer closet. He is yeah. when you're fasting. He is when you're doing something individual. But when the corporate group gets together and worships him, yeah. he inhabits. He dwells there. He performs miracles. He does things that are fantastic and he can renew your mind. mind. You got to look up that scripture because it says, but when I entered your wow. sanctuary, yes. I was transformed. Yeah. Wow. I know your steadfast yes. love will endure forever. Mm. I won't be screwed up about how I think about the wow. world or myself. Yes. Come on. I think we answered that question and I hope yeah. you got our message Amen. loud and clear. <laughs> we don't want to make anyone feel guilty or put any condemnation on any of you that like to watch church online. We're grateful that you do that. But we hope that you understood the passion that we brought to that question just for you. And here's another question just for you. Similar. What does it mean to serve others? Similar, Amy. So I just watched the Jesus Revolution movie, which everybody has to see if you haven't. Second time to see it. And I love I love the picture that they gave of the church, right? The The people were like, we don't like the hippies and you know we're too good for them and they're messing up the carpet their dirty feet come in the church and mess up the carpet I mean if you can imagine right and and the pastor said you know what how about I just serve them and washes their feet before they walk in the door of the church I'm thinking that's exactly what we should be doing as a people. You come as you are, like you just said, and you basically we're going to love you right where you're at. And if you're in need, we're going to help you. We're here to serve you. How can I serve? You're going to have to give. You're going to have to be generous. You're going to have to be selfless. You're going to have to not think about others other than just yourself. So there's some things you're going to have to do. But if we're not serving, I don't know how we're really showing the gospel. So like good. it has to cost something. Yeah. Like I think sometimes we're like, oh yeah, I can do that. But it has to cost oh, something, wow. you know? There, there has to be a cost to it. That's, yeah. that's true service. ministry and yeah. service. And you know what? The irony of it is that you receive more than you give. Oh, yeah. The so blessing true. is so much greater. And that's yeah. not why we do mm -hmm. it, but it's just like, Oh, here's the bonus, right. you know? I mean, I was so blessed to have parents that were such a great example. They served, and they still do in their retirement. They're still serving, but they served my whole life. From, from as early memory that I have, my parents were servants. They just gave and gave, and it just, there was never a question. It was, there was never a question. That's just part of your life as a Christian of, of growing in fellowship with others and with the Lord, you serve. Yeah, yeah. Right. Ooh, that's, that's good. What do you have? Well, scripture does say if you want to be great in God's kingdom, you have to be a servant, servant. of all. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. And, you know, it doesn't just mean, well, Amy brought up a good point. Meet them at their need, right. not what you like to do. Sometimes we like, yeah. we like to do certain things. Who would like to wash somebody else's feet? This pastor that she's talking about met them at their need. And I grew up during the Jesus Revolution. Mm -hmm. I was saved in 72. Nice. It was awesome. And, wow. you know, revival is returning. Come on. And the thing was, though, that they were servants. Mm -hmm. They were serving God. And, you know, I just love when Jesus is on the cross and he said, John, behold 
your mother. He took care of his mother when he was dying and suffering on the cross. Yes. Beaten, you know, blood dripping and, and everything that was going on in his life. He mm -hmm. said, behold your mother. He even took care sure. of people mm -hmm. dying on the cross as he was taking care of our sin. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm gonna go to this next question because mm -hmm. I'm coming mm -hmm. to you on this. Mm -hmm. um, it's a good one too. It's similar to the serving and everything we're talking about. Does your choice of friends Angela, matter to your faith? Absolutely. <laughs> One, two, three, four, That's five. exactly right. I am glad I'm in some good company here today. But it matters because it's going to focus your perspective and how you see things. Like King Solomon says, as a man yes. thinks in his heart, so is he. So if I'm engaging with you and you're constantly reminding me of the goodness of God and keeping my gaze on eternal things, then my mind and my heart is going to be set as such. And just like even Amy's story about the pastor and, and the hippies coming in, and it, if we're not with the right people, we can look like the Pharisees or those church folks mm -hmm. who are saying, what about you? You don't belong here. You don't. Yeah. And that can be how we show up, which is completely contrary to Christ. Or we can be friends with that pastor, how he shows up in the world and says, let's serve, let's wash those feet. And as he does, I see it and it causes me to say, mm -hmm. I need to be more like that. Mm -hmm. That's where I see Jesus. Let me engage that space better. Mm -hmm. But I do think it's important um, to be outside your box of the church, yes. outside your Bible study, outside your life group, outside your groups, and be with people who don't know him. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's really important too. Important. But, but the negativity that can come from that has to be tempered by the word of God. Yes. You have to be steady and strong. I think. Yeah, yes. for yeah. sure. Anybody, friends? What yeah, you got? well, Jesus had friends that were sinners. Yes. yes. Right. But what did he do? He followed Psalm 1. Psalm 1 says, you don't sit in the seat of the scornful. You don't walk with a sinner. He didn't do the things they did, but he could still sit with him and proclaim his light. Yeah. So I think we can, we are in the world to be a light. And as Amy said before about salt and being flavorful, you know, the, the scripture is such a balance. It says bad company, Paul says bad company corrupts, corrupts good, good morals. morals. But then right. he says, I am all things to oh. all men that I might win, win some. some. Yeah. Yeah. He, to the weak, I have become weak. To the poor, yeah. I have become poor. He had suffered those things. He understood what they were going through. So the scripture says, you were once one of them. Understand where you used to be so that you can reach those that need to come where I but am. I like Angela's, I like that. I would rather be with my Jesus people. I would rather be lifted up and edified, but sometimes I'm not. And sometimes I'm with people. It could be work situations and they're not like me. Well, I think about Daniel in Babylon. Like yes. Daniel was surrounded right. by all these young men and, but the, the, his closest friends, those that he was advised by and those, those, it was Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. And when they when it, you know, when it came down to it, when they were given these decrees that they were supposed to eat this meat and they were supposed to do these things that, that you know, according to the Lord's, they, they weren't going to do. They stood firm yes. because he had these close friendships. Daniel didn't say, I'm not going to spend time with any of these other young men. He was still surrounded by all of them. He was still kind to them. He was still, he still had relationships with all of those people. But the, his closest friends that he got his advice and his wisdom from they were the godly men and they helped each other they stood firm arm in arm together and then when Shadrach Meshach and Abednego were in the fiery furnace right. you know they stood together and they withstood with the Lord's power they stood together. Right. I'm thinking of the people listening to us. Amy, what, what can you say to them? Well, we're to go into all the world and to yes. preach. I mean, to go into all the world and to have a relationship with somebody, to win them to Christ. Right. I mean, there's a friendship there, some camaraderie. But Jesus also modeled the one, the three, the 12, right. the 120, and the yes. multitude. Well, so, fine. and you're talking about those, those inner circles that have full access to your yes. life, where their values are your values, their thoughts yes. are your thoughts. Like we're in the same lane because their viewpoint and their worldview affects your worldview. Yes. So uh, our scripture, yes. as iron sharpens iron, yes. right? 
So one friend or sister sharpens another. So right. I looked that up in different translations. So the second part of the verse says, friends keep each other sharp. They influence one another through discussion. We learn from each other. We sharpen the mind of each other. We sharpen the face, the wits, the countenance. We improve each other. We sharpen the character. Steel sharpens steel. We bring out worthy purpose. Isn't that good? Mm -hmm. And we have discussions that are stimulating. <laughs> yes. 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 Does everybody <laughs> always agree with you? Yes. <laughs> Now listen, if you've watched Sister to Sister, you know that we don't all agree. Oh, and it's intense. And sometimes I need an Advil afterward. And that's okay. <laughs> it's iron sharpening iron yes. and it makes each other better. It yes. sharpens our wits. Do you have friends that aren't in the Christian world? I do. I love them. <laughs> I have some Jewish friends and I, I just, I love them. Absolutely. Well, we hope that these answered your questions from our hearts. Stay right there. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the table. We're still talking away as you went to get your coffee. That's all right. Hey, this question is so good that I'm going to get right to Roxanne, my scripture girl. Roxy, you sent it. How do you listen to God? in prayer. <coughs> okay, I think this is a very individual thing. Okay. And I'm going to say what happens with me. Hmm. There is no question in my life that God speaks <coughs> to me through his word, the Bible. Hmm. There have been so many times, even when I just open it up or somebody says a word and I go look it up, oh, that's me. Mm -hmm. Last week I forgot to, I didn't order my schedule properly and I missed a big event and and I'm like and God says number our days that we may present a heart of wisdom we still make mistakes he exalts his word above his name Psalm 138 heaven and earth will pass away but his word mm -hmm. will last forever and the other thing I have to say about hearing God and in, in prayer is worship that's right there are times when you can't read, you can't talk. There was one time when I couldn't even sing and then Don Moen's song came on. You, God, will be my song. And that's from the, the Psalms. So the Lord's word is transformative. It's powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. The Bible says dividing between the bone and the marrow, getting to the root right. of the problem. That's right. How do you hear from God in prayer, Angela? I go to the Bible um, and because his word, he'll never contradict. And I start there and invite him in to that space. You know, Psalms 4610 says, be still and know. So quiet. Mm -hmm. Yes, that I am God. And so, and it's not like a lazy or a sleeping stillness. It's an active that's stillness, true. but it is sitting in his presence with his word, him who is the word, and allowing him to speak truth to my heart that it sets me free and transforms my life. Oh, I like it. Mm -hmm. Pastor well, Amy. You can't listen to God in prayer if you're doing all the talking. Oh, oh wow. first of all. Good. I mean, there there is a stillness and a quietness that yes. you need to shut it up it and listen <laughs> it to him. He knows more than you. He, he's trying to show you, but you won't quit talking. But there is a scripture that I learned in Bible school that has helped me so much. So I thought maybe it would help with this. In Proverbs 20, 27, the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all of the inward parts of the belly. So you might hear like, I had this gut feeling. Mm -hmm. I had this, and that is the Holy Spirit enlightening something, shedding light on, because His Spirit, right, lives in us, Christ in us, the hope of glory, and He wants to show us all things. So you've got to listen, be led by peace. You'll know if it's, if it's God, there's a peace behind it. Well, I, mm -hmm. I find one thing that's really interesting, I wanna seek His face more than seek what He can do me. Mm -hmm. And that's a big one for me. And I'm going to change 
to joy. Corey, you're Ooh. just my joy girl. Yeah. So what brings you joy, Miss Corey? I'm gonna answer that question, but I just wanna say one more thing about Come the on. prayer. I do think the healthier your prayer life, the more clearly you hear the yes. Lord. I think sometimes mm -hmm. we're like, we haven't had any prayer life at all. And then we're like, okay, God, I'm ready to hear you. And yes, it's like, you, you haven't even been communicating at all. So I just wanted to say that real well, quick. Well, no, that's really good because we didn't touch on that. Yeah, so I just wanted to say that so, real quick. Thank you. What Bonifacio. brings yeah. me joy <laughs> is immediately the thing I heard, uh, I, the verse I thought of immediately, and my mother-in-law had painted this on my kid's toy box, is 3 John 1, 4. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. Uh, oh. That's Good. So your children being and with God. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's no greater joy. No it's greater in the word joy. and it is true. <laughs> well, you have a lot of children. Do you feel that way? Yes, I do. And, Five and, children. You know, and, and they walk in with the Lord in various ways and so on. And they do bring me such uh, such utter joy, I can't even explain it. But I want to say this about something because I went back into, we're talking about the Jesus revolution mm -hmm. and all that. And during that time, you know, the, the scripture says, I think it's in Luke, that the angels rejoice when one sinner repents. Right. Well, I was kind of a new Christian and I was an intern at a particular place. I don't want to say it was administ hospital administration. And a person came to me and said, you know, what's going on with you? I want to know. And slowly and gradually, God, through the Holy Spirit and through my life, led her to the Lord. Distraught, verge of divorce, um, so many things confused about who she was and who God was. I had such utter joy, not the, that I was the conduit, wow. because you could see the Holy, when we witness to somebody, and I yeah. challenge people out there, yeah. if you just speak yeah. the word to somebody that they need to hear, it's gonna bring you so much joy. If yeah. you are in sadness, if you are in turmoil, if you are in trouble, go speak to somebody That's else so and good. bring them life. And I, it took me back to that time where I had so much joy that her life, now she didn't transform everything in a day, but gradually God worked in her life to set her free. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's good. So Girls, good. brings you um, joy. Uh, spending time with the Lord, my family, my church, the goodness of God, long walks, iced tea, rich friendships, and my sisters. Aww. Aww. I like that little yes. list. Yes. Angela, what do you have? What brings you joy? Spending time with my family, really. Like that is my happy place. Seeing my girls alive in Christ and just being with them and watching them to develop into who they are. How old are your girls? So 10 and seven. 10 and Aww. seven, wow. that's good. Mm -hmm. That's good, so all of us have our family at the top of our list. Yeah. Yeah. Joy, joy, joy. Yes. I love it. You know what brings me joy? <laughs> Don't laugh. Well, watching The Chosen and how <laughs> Jesus shows up. Like everything's going bad and the apostles are all freaking out. You have to watch it, The Chosen, it's an app. But then Jesus shows up and I see his face and it brings me such joy. It brings peace and peace for me is joy. We'll be right back. We're gonna wrap this thing up. Today's closing scripture is found in Galatians, chapter five, verses 22 through 25. And it is this, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Now those who belong to Christ Jesus crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let's follow the Spirit as well. You know, Christians face a critical challenge. Not only must we profess our faith, we must possess its virtues. Natural fruit resisting infestation grows with sunlight, water, cultivation, and care. 
spiritual fruit resisting sin grows with the light of God's Son and the water of His Word in our lives. And as we talked about, the fellowship with one another, being in prayer, being in relationship with Him and with His Son. So by God's mercy, let's resist sin Resist the temptation. Resist those things that take you away from God's love and God's family. And allow the Holy Spirit and the love of Jesus to cultivate the virtues in your life, those virtues, those fruits of the Spirit so that you may become the person God has purposed in your life. Wow, I would say, preach it, sister. <laughs> that was really good. See, this is why I love being on this show, Sister to Sister, because I learn from the Word of God, but I learn from these girls. If you need help, there is a number at the bottom of the screen, 24-7. And we end with this scripture, as iron sharpens iron, so does the countenance of a man or a woman sharpen each other. We'll see you next time.